Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs, and welcome to episode 23 of my photography, Lightroom, and Photoshop tips. My name is Serge Remedy. I'm a French photographer living in Paris. Okay, this week we are going to go to the French Alps. Uh, last Sunday, I, uh, I was uh, commissioned to take photography of a beautiful chalet in the Alps. And uh, I thought it was a good idea to make a little tutorial on how you retouch, you know, a snowy, uh, photo and Alps and by night. So this is the before uh, photo, it's kind of nice. And I'll show you all kind of tricks about, you know, making the snow the best possible. This is the after photo. Okay, so let's, let's not waste any time and let me show you how we do this. All right, guys, so this is Christmas. I love Christmas, especially when you are in the snow, in the French Alps, for example. So here is a shot that I did last Sunday. I was um, doing a shot for a real estate agent who was the owner of this incredible chalet in uh, the French Alps. So I did a lot of photos, but I just want to show you my, my workflow on shooting um, chalet in the snow. So this was taken at four seconds of exposure at f5.6. Now one thing about that you must watch about the, when you're out in the mountains is that the sun is coming down very fast. The, the night comes fast because the sun is going to go behind the mountain and so the, the, the sky is going to go very dark very fast. So I always try to shoot at the blue hour which is basically, well, you know, when the sky is blue and when you still got details in the sky but the lights are on. Usually it's a time lapse of about 20 minutes to half an hour. I'm not kidding because before that Usually the lights are not turned on and after that it's just too dark and you've got no more details in the sky. So 99% of my shots I do it at that time. Okay, now that's been said, let's retouch that photo. Let me press I to take out this. Okay, and let's go. So my usual workflow as you know is to open up the shadows so that we get more details in the shadows and bring down the highlights. Okay, so that's kind of cool. Then next I press the option key and I'm going to set a white point which is bringing it to the right until we see some white stuff and then doing the same thing with the blacks. Now, uh, key point here in this photo is going to be the white balance. So one way you can do the white balance is by taking this little um, tool here and clicking on a neutral target. So what is a neutral target? Well, it's just something which is 18% gray. Basically, I do something which is a bit like grayish, like this, for example. Okay, that's not bad. I get the blues back. I get the blues back. Uh, you know, it, it, it puts the whole photo cold, which is kind of nice because the blue is going way good with the snow. But what I don't like is that it's not warm enough where there is the lights. So this is what I usually do. I usually take a brush and I go on tint and uh, or I just press the option key and click on reset making sure everything's at zero and then I'm just gonna tint a bit I'm gonna put this to the right with some magenta and some yellows and I'm just gonna paint wherever we have lights and you know what that's gonna do that's gonna bring warms back and warms is all about Christmas Christmas is all about being warm so you have a contrast between the warm and the cold. And that's very important. That's a very important contrast. Now, if you are like me and you just spilled over the snow, then you can press the Alt key and it becomes a minus instead of a plus and you just erase whatever you've done on the snow. Okay, so the snow is, doesn't get this, this color cast. We only want this color cast uh, on, the, um, on the lights. Yes, on the lights and nothing else but the lights. Okay, and on, that makes a big difference for me. Look, before it's kind of like, uh, and now it's like, whoa, this is Christmas. Kind of like that. Okay, the overall photo is a bit, is a bit too, um, too dark for me. So I'm going to, you know, just brighten up a little bit, you know. Uh, Sometimes I go and check what happens if I go to landscapes. But, you know, just a little check. Ooh, I don't like it. So I'm going to put it back to Adobe Standard. Okay, so let's move fast. Um, now, one thing that bothers me is uh, I'm just going to do a little bit of dodge and burn real fast. But So I just take the brush back 
press the Alt key to put everything back at zero, a bit of exposure, exposure, and uh, I'm going to get the flow about 70%, the density about 70%, and I'm going to just paint in some parts just to, you know, make a bit more interesting line. That's my usual stuff. You know that now. If you've been following me for a while, you know I like to do that. Uh, why? I don't know. I just like it. No, it's just, you know, it just I like to sort of make a more complex lightning of things, you know, maybe like put a little, you know, you know some kind of light here and, you know, I'm just cheating my way around, but trying to make some art. Okay, so before the dodge and burn, after the dodge and burn. Now, one last thing, and that's very important with snow, and I'm going to jump into Photoshop. Now, I think this the, the whole photo is a bit too blue. You know, looking at it, I think I'm going to back down a bit my overall temperature, just a little bit, to make it a bit less blue and maybe a bit less magenta. Nah, nah. I think white balance is a very, very complex subject. Now, next, clarity. I usually go negative clarity on Christmas. I'm going this side. Not as much, but just a little bit to make things a bit, you know, a bit glowy, you know, a bit more Christmas stuff. More than here, HDR, like high um, HDR. No, I, I want to make this... Uh, no, I'm, I'm just not going to touch it. I'm going to leave it in the middle. But there's one thing I'm going to do. I'm going to clean up that snow real fast, and I'll show you a way I like to do that. So, right-click on the photo, edit, in Photoshop CS6. Yes, Photoshop CS6. Open anyway. Yes, I'm not updated totally on uh, my Photoshop CS6. That's why I've got that message. Okay, here we are. I duplicate the background. And now I'm going to take the... Uh, just like if we do... Uh, if we would do that on a face. I think, you know, all these spots here are a bit distracting. So I'm going to use the healing brush tool. Make it a bit bigger. And I'm just going to heal... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's not the healing brush tool. It's a spot healing brush tool. Here we are. Because with a spot healing brush tool, you can just, you know, paint the spots away. You know, I'm just trying to clean up a bit of snow here to make this a bit, uh, yeah, more interesting snow. And uh, so, and that's something you cannot do in Lightroom. I hate to go to Photoshop. I would love to be, to do everything in Lightroom. But that's not the case. Unfortunately, sometimes you have to go into Photoshop. And cleaning up snow is one of the things why you have to go into Photoshop. I know it's crazy, but that's how it is. That's how life is. Because believe me, if you try to do this with Lightroom, you know, using the spot healing brush tool, for example, you'll be here until next year. Okay, so I'm cleaning this up. I'm not going to take you too long watching me clean, you know. Um, I don't like cleaning during the day. I'm not a big clean man. So, but anyway, I'm doing it. I have to make this a bit better. Okay, so let's see here. It's not it's not much, but it's less distracting. See? Ooh, before, after. You can go on, you know, but let's make it still real. But one thing I do is I'm going to duplicate again the background. And I'm going to go into filter. I'm going to go into blur and into Gaussian blur. And I'm going to Gaussian blur the photo a little bit because uh, I want to Gaussian blur a little bit of snow. Okay, now this is all blurred now. So I'm going to press the Option key and the Mask tool and that's going to create a black mask. So now the blur is gone away. Then I'm pressing the B key for the brush and I'm taking a white brush and you know that when you paint white on a black mask, what happens? It reveals whatever is in that layer. So uh, my brush, I'm going to put this at around uh, 80 opacity. You see here, the opacity is at 80%. And I'm going to brush here and I'm going to Gaussian blur the snow. Now, thing is, you will, you know, you kind of see that I have Gaussian blur the snow. And, and I don't, I don't want to make it so much visible. But as everything in Photoshop, you can overdo something first. And then you can back down the opacity. It's just uh, just one second. Let me go back. Okay, I'm sorry for this. I have a little bug on my computer where sometimes I loses my I lose my brush and I have to go out of Photoshop and come back to get it back. It's a bit crazy. Okay, so now I've blurred everything. You can try to put this this layer into a soft light. See what happens. Not good. Not good at all. So then you keep it into normal, but you just 
lowers the opacity. Sunflap will work sometime. I'm going to lower the opacity to about 30%. Now check this out, before and after. No, not enough. Let's go to about 50% before and after. It's kind of subtle, uh, but it just puts less attention on the snow. I want less attention on the snow, okay? And um, that's, I think, is important because if it's too distracting, then, you know, you won't be able to see uh, the whole thing. Uh, last but not least, I think I'm going to, I'm going to, go and click on command alt shift e to create a layer command alt shift e is going to create a layer of what of all we've done so far i'm going to take the crop tool and i'm going to crop the photo a little bit i'm going to take some of the background make it more panoramic okay that's kind of cool and uh, i think i'm going to go for a little um vignette effect and for this i'm going to put this into multiply so that the whole thing gets dark. Then I'm gonna take my marquee tool, the rectangle marquee tool, and I'm gonna make a little rectangle marquee tool like this. Then I'm gonna go into select, modify, feather. I'm gonna go feather it about 400 pixels, and then I'm gonna press delete, okay? So see what happens before, after. It's a bit too much, so I'm gonna lower the opacity of the vignette. But the idea was to just, yeah, see how it makes a bit of a more complex lighting. I like to do the vignette this way. Okay, then I'm going to press File, Close to go back, Save, to go back into Lightroom. So now I'm back into Lightroom with the, the new um, version. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, you can go on, but that's basically it. Let me show you the before and after. So I'm going to... This is the before photo. I'm going to reset it. So you really get the before and that's the after. I'm going to press C to compare. So before, that's what you have here on the left. And after, uh, a complete different type of photo. And uh, yeah, I kind of like it. I hope uh, it uh, inspires you to go out in the snow and take photos. Thank you, guys. If you go on my website, photosearch.com, and you click on the App Store, you will see that you have all my training, all the Lightroom 4 training, Photoshop training, and a package with all Lightroom 4 training. You get the best price if you buy, you know, a package like, you know, $27 instead of $30 for all the Lightroom training, $36 instead of $40 for all the Photoshop training. And if you want everything, it's $56 instead of $70. And last but not least, if you want to get the podcast, if you want to see the past episodes, you can click on the podcast. You've got all the 22 episodes as of the taping of this of this course. And you can even, for some of them, you can purchase the raw file that's being used so you can create at home the same photo. Thank you, guys, and see you next week. Thank you, guys, for watching that tutorial. This week's inspiration is, again, my preferred photographer on the planet named Eric Almas. Uh, if you follow my podcast, you know that I'm a huge fan of his work. He's the guy I want to become when I grow up. And uh, he's from Norway. He lives in San Francisco. His name is Eric Almas. He just came out with a brand new DVD. It's a bit expensive because it's $299. But believe me, I'm going to buy this DVD for Christmas. No problem. I've been waiting for him to release his technology for so many years. He's for me the best on the planet at this time. So if you want to get into real compositing and incredible, amazing photography, check out his work, Eric Almas. You'll see he's amazing. Okay, guys, see you next week for a special Christmas episode. Goodbye.